Hello and welcome back to my channel everybody. I have a special guest in the studio today. I have right here the brand new Oryx Pro from System76. We're going to take a look at this laptop in this video and I'm going to give it a full review. I've actually had it for a little bit over a week now. I'm a bit late. I was really busy getting the Ansible videos done. But I wanted to go ahead and definitely review this machine because it's awesome. And in this video, I'm going to show you all around the hardware, the ports, performance, and talk about the good, the bad, everything you need to know about this machine. And actually, this laptop is mine. I bought yet another System76 laptop. So System76 has had no hand in this video whatsoever. This was purchased out of my own money. You know, I had a stack of laptops that I just, you know, I never do anything with my old junk. And I've had some really good laptops, actually, that I wasn't even using. And I put some stuff up on eBay and I actually made enough money to buy this machine. So we're going to take a look in this video at my actual System76 Oryx Pro. So let's go ahead and get started. And here it is in all of its glory. I was immediately impressed by the build quality. The chassis is metallic, it's very firm, and surprisingly, this is the closest that System76 has ever been to ThinkPad level build quality. Now let's talk about the hardware overall. First, the screen. The screen is really good. I would rate the brightness as an eight out of 10, and the display is 1080p with a refresh rate of 144 hertz. Now, some people might be disappointed that it's not a 4K display, but I actually prefer 1080p. I don't feel that resolutions beyond 1080p benefits Linux users all that much, especially since we have things like dynamic workspaces to split our workflow between multiple virtual desktops. And in my opinion, the Linux platform has the best implementation of virtual desktops, so 1080p is more than fine for me. And I just don't feel that resolutions beyond 1080p are all that necessary on laptops anyway. As for the lid itself, it's very firm and it's thin but not too thin. My only complaint about the lid is that I kind of missed the glowing sections that was on the lid of the previous model that kind of made the laptop look a bit futuristic. The new Gazelle, which I also reviewed recently, also has glowing sections on the lid as well. But on this machine, nothing actually glows on the lid. It's more of a simpler look. And the simpler lid makes this laptop look more like a business laptop, which means that this machine would look more at home inside a business than the previous model, because even though I liked the glowing lid, the glowing lid kind of made the previous model look more like a consumer laptop, and this one has more of a professional aesthetic to it. Now let's talk about the keyboard. As some of you may know, I write books, and I also do all kinds of you know, Linux commands and scripting and things like that. So I can actually put a keyboard through some abuse, and it's important that the keyboard is comfortable and actually nice to type on. And the keyboard on this machine is really good. I think I would rate it an eight out of 10 at least. And sometimes I feel like the System76 keyboards, I actually prefer them over Lenovo keyboards on the ThinkPad series which are notorious for having awesome keyboards. Depending on my mood, I might prefer one over the other, but I actually like the keyboard quite a bit. It's basically the same keyboard that was on the Gazelle, and if I remember correctly, it's pretty much the same keyboard that was on the previous model as well, and no complaints there, the keyboard is fine. And just like pretty much all laptops released nowadays, the keyboard on the new Oryx Pro features a backlight. But this one even goes a step further and allows you to change the color of the backlight as well, which is pretty cool. And that's not really new because a lot of the previous models and other laptops that were released by System76 also feature that ability. But the ability to change the color of your backlight is definitely a conversation starter, if nothing else, and it does look pretty cool. Now personally, I don't really type in the dark all that often, so the backlight feature isn't something that I really use. But for those of you that enjoy typing in the dark, I think you'll be happy to know that the backlight on this keyboard is actually really good. Now, in regards to the trackpad, it's very smooth, almost slippery. It's probably one of my favorites. There are physical buttons, which I actually prefer, but you can also use the tap to click feature as well, so you don't have to use the physical buttons if you don't want to. 
And I just love how my finger glides over the trackpad. It just feels so cool. It's so easy to get the mouse cursor around the screen. But other than that, you know, it's your standard trackpad. It's an adequate size and it gets the job done. Now when it comes to ports, we actually have a pretty good selection of ports on this machine. On the left hand side, we have a separate audio and microphone jack as well as USB 3. And there's even a micro SD slot as well, which I'll be using a lot because I'm always flashing SD cards for Raspberry Pis multiple times per week. And some of the camcorders that I use for this channel also use micro SD. And I think it's pretty cool that I won't need to reach for a USB card reader every time I want to set up a new Raspberry Pi or dump footage from a camcorder. On the right hand side, we have two more USB ports and even a physical ethernet jack as well. So for those of you that do any form of sysadmin work, you will definitely appreciate that because you won't have to reach for a USB ethernet dongle in order to configure something like a switch. On the back, we have a barrel connector for power, a USB-C port, as well as an HDMI and mini display port for external displays. The USB-C port does feature Thunderbolt, and that's a relief because both the Lemur Pro and the new Gazelle that I've recently reviewed on this channel, they actually don't support Thunderbolt, so it's good that this one does. There's some debate around Thunderbolt due to security concerns, but like it or not, Thunderbolt devices are being made and they do exist in the retail space, so it's important to have Thunderbolt support for those of you out there that do want to actually utilize it. But if you don't plan on using that feature, you can, of course, turn it off. So I'm glad to see that it is at least an option for those of you that actually have a use for that. Now, you could argue that Thunderbolt support isn't as important on a high-end laptop like this that has an NVIDIA card because one of the number one use cases for Thunderbolt nowadays is to plug in an external GPU. And eGPUs, they don't really have any value here because the built-in video card is going to outperform an eGPU anyway. But more and more Thunderbolt devices are being made available, such as external hard drives, for example. So it's good to see that here. So let's talk about the different modes that you can have the GPU in on this laptop that gives you, the user, control over performance and battery life. There's actually four modes available on this machine, and those are Integrated, NVIDIA, Hybrid, and Compute. Integrated mode switches the laptop to Intel only, which saves your battery life, and in that mode, the NVIDIA video card won't be used at all for anything. And the opposite of Integrated mode is NVIDIA mode, which utilizes the dedicated GPU all the time regardless of whether or not that's actually necessary for the type of application that you're running. Now hybrid mode is basically the best of both worlds. In this mode, the majority of your apps will run on the integrated Intel card most of the time, but it gives you the ability to have an app utilize the NVIDIA GPU on demand when necessary. In this mode, you can have games run against the NVIDIA card for the performance boost, but something like your email client won't utilize the dedicated card since that would be a waste of resources. Now for me, all the games that I ran on this laptop automatically ran against the NVIDIA GPU. But if for some reason you do run a game that doesn't automatically choose the NVIDIA GPU, you have full control. All you have to do is right click the application icon for that game and then click where it says launch using dedicated card to force it to run on the NVIDIA GPU. And that gives you the user full control over which GPU an application runs against. Another mode that we could put the laptop in is compute mode, but that's not actually something that I've used. I'm pretty sure that's for machine learning, which is not something that I do, but it is an option, just so you know. With hybrid mode giving you the ability to run the NVIDIA GPU only when necessary, you might actually be wondering why you would ever want to use the full NVIDIA mode at all. And the answer is external displays. If you do want to use external displays with this laptop, you will need to do so while in NVIDIA mode because in hybrid mode, the external display ports are not accessible. If you do try to plug in a display cable while you are in hybrid mode, you will actually see a message on the screen that's going to give you the notice that you need to be in NVIDIA mode to use an external display, and it will give you the option to switch it to NVIDIA mode, but that does require a reboot. Also, this machine utilizes Core Boot for the firmware, which is an open source firmware replacement that's also more lightweight than proprietary solutions. 
And Coreboot isn't new when it comes to System76. They've been shipping laptops with Coreboot for a while now. But what's interesting here is that this machine supports NVIDIA graphics, which until now hasn't been feasible on Coreboot machines. Basically, Coreboot is easier to implement on machines with integrated graphics, but the combination of Coreboot and NVIDIA working together is just awesome. Now the only downside to this is that the NVIDIA card is still utilizing proprietary drivers, perhaps due to the open source Nouveau driver not offering the same performance as the proprietary driver, but either way, having Coreboot on a machine with NVIDIA graphics is actually an achievement, and now we're closer than we've ever been before to an all open source laptop. We'll get there. And when it comes to switchable graphics with NVIDIA, it's handled so brilliantly on this machine. It's actually my favorite improvement in this model overall. To put it lightly, switchable graphics in Linux has been an annoyance for quite some time now. Now the way that switchable graphics in Linux has worked up until now is that you would have to close all of your applications and save your work and reboot into NVIDIA mode to play a game and then when you're done gaming, you would reboot again back into Intel mode to go ahead and continue working. So it made it really hard to keep your apps open and your files open on your screen or have any kind of uptime, and it's just been a chore. But with hybrid mode on this laptop, that's not a problem that we have to deal with anymore. Pop! OS has had support for hybrid graphics for a while now, but it's been somewhat hit or miss because how useful it is or isn't depends on the underlying hardware and the BIOS. But on this model, those issues have almost completely went away due to the brilliant work by Jeremy from System76, who decided to take it upon himself to try to solve these problems. The Oryx Pro actually defaults to hybrid graphics, and it actually works. This means that most of the time, Intel graphics will be used, and if you run a game, it should run using the dedicated video card automatically. But if for some reason it doesn't, you can right-click on the application icon for the game to force it to run against the dedicated card, and for me, this has worked flawlessly. Now the downside, again, is that I have to be in full NVIDIA mode to use external displays, but maybe that's something that System76 can tackle in the future, assuming that there isn't a hardware restriction that has prevented that from happening. As for my unit, I actually ordered it with 32 gigs of RAM, and it comes with a 10th generation Intel Core i7-10875H CPU, that runs at 2.3 gigahertz, but can actually turbo all the way up to 5.1 gigahertz. The CPU has eight cores and 16 threads, and the performance is just plain awesome. As for the GPU, I ordered mine with the GeForce RTX 2080, which has eight gigs of RAM and 3072 CUDA cores. The gaming performance is actually great. Everything just ran very well for me. I have no complaints whatsoever. Now, as good as this laptop is, there are a few downsides that I feel I need to make you aware of, and the first is the sound quality, specifically the quality of the built-in speakers. I just don't feel that the integrated speakers are all that great. They sound overly tinny to me, like there's too much treble and not enough bass. So if sound quality is important to you, just keep that in mind. But on my end, that really doesn't impact me at all because I'm almost always using a Bluetooth headset anyway, so the built-in speakers aren't really something that I would use all that often. And the other downside is the fan. The good thing about it is that it only comes on when there's a good reason for it. And when I'm browsing the web, I'm checking my email, you know, lightweight tasks just like that, I never hear the fan. The laptop is completely silent in those use cases, and that's exactly the way that it should be. When it does come on though, when the fan does come on, it's kind of on the loud side, and it seems kind of sudden. It goes from zero to somewhat loud pretty quickly, but thankfully the fan only comes on, again, when there's a good reason for that. For example, when I am rendering a video, I'm downloading a bunch of files that are synchronizing from another machine, I'm playing Doom Eternal, something like that. Those are all good reasons for the fan to come on. And yeah, that's a downside, but to be fair, the fan, again, only comes on when it needs to and is silent most of the time, so it's also a benefit. Just know that when the fan does come on, you'll definitely hear it. When it comes to battery life, this is not the machine to get if battery life is your primary concern. The Lemur Pro that I've reviewed recently, that's a great laptop when it comes to battery life. Now, the battery life on this machine isn't bad. 
It's just that this is more of a, you know, a designer's workstation, a professional laptop, something for a sysadmin or someone who needs more power. So the focus is on performance on this machine, not battery life, like the Lemur Pro, which the Lemur Pro basically got about a day's worth of battery, sometimes more than a day, and you're not gonna achieve that on this machine. You can easily get three hours and you could probably stretch it all the way up to five depending on your workload and whether or not you are running in battery saver and other factors. So you can probably squeeze it to five hours and maybe even more if you are very conservative. So the battery is by no means bad. It actually is better than the previous model. It's just not gonna measure up to the Lemur Pro. But I don't think that anyone is expecting it to measure up to the Lemur Pro because again, the intended audience for this laptop is for people that need a performance machine and this machine definitely delivers on that front. Can't hunt with my bare hands. I need to find a weapon. So what's my verdict on the new System76 Oryx Pro? Actually, I love this laptop. I think it's the best 15 inch laptop that they've ever made. It's that good. Now to be fair, I did bring up some concerns earlier in the video. For example, the integrated speakers didn't impress me at all. And I don't enjoy the fact that I have to reboot into full NVIDIA mode in order to use an external display. Now my understanding is that's a restriction in hardware, nothing to do with System76. And this is not a new thing because we've had this restriction on pretty much every laptop that they've made with NVIDIA graphics in as far back as I can remember. But considering that they've nailed switchable graphics on this machine, it would have been nice if they tackled that problem as well. But for all I know, there could be a hardware restriction that makes that impossible. Also, when it comes to the fan, as I mentioned earlier, it can be on the loud side, but to be fair, it only comes on when it's absolutely necessary for it to do so. So I think that the fan is also an upside too. You won't hear it all that often unless you're doing something that is, you know, like a high end workflow or maybe a high end task or something like that. So when I'm rendering a video playing Doom Eternal, it comes on. But otherwise, when I'm browsing the web, I really don't hear it. But I bring it up just in case you plan on using this laptop in a library or something like that. You definitely don't want to use this machine in full performance mode when you are somewhere like a library. Just keep that in mind. But overall, this laptop is amazing. I love the fact that I could run in hybrid mode almost all the time, anytime I don't need to use an external display, and then use the NVIDIA card on demand whenever I need to. Now again, this was possible before, but they've really nailed it in this machine, it actually feels like a first class implementation of NVIDIA, which just makes this machine all that much better. The hardware quality is just amazing. The build quality is great. The chassis is firm. Everything that, you know, just feels solid. It feels like a really well-made machine. It doesn't feel cheap and there's no flex virtually anywhere that I've been able to find. And the battery life, while, you know, it's not really a focus here, you will get about three or four hours or so, like I mentioned earlier in the video. And you know, that's not terrible. Obviously, you'll wanna go with a Lemur Pro if battery life is important to you. But you know, with this machine, we do get a great balance of performance and battery, and that's good enough for me. So I'm really happy to own this machine, and I definitely recommend it. So check it out. Let me know what you think in the comments down below, and I will have a review of another System76 laptop on my channel, most likely this week if I can get it edited in time. So definitely subscribe if you haven't already done so, and I will see you in that video as soon as I have it uploaded. Thanks for watching.